sets. <laughs> right? So now he says, what is the Chaturthaha? Chaturthaha, the fourth, which is Vigneyaha, which is really what uh, uh, Upanishad wants to convey to you, is what? Na Antaf Pradnyam. Okay? What is Antaf Pradnyam? Subtle. Very good, Uta. Okay? When we talked about subtle, we talked about Antaf Pradnyam. Why do we call it Antaf Pradnyam? Is because in the dream, okay, there is no such thing called internal and external. Everything is what? In the, in the waking, what is happening? There is me, right? And I have sense organs to look at something which is external. In the dream, but everything is what? I do I need to use my sense organs? Not at all. Everything is inside. So this is why we call it Antaprajna. The subtle, the, when it is available to me alone, without physical, okay, it is the entire thing is only internal. Okay? So this is what we call Antaprajna. Antaprajna is not what I am because it is subtle, as Buddha is saying. The I that I need to understand, it is what? Is it subtle that I am talking about? No. Okay. Then it is the Bahishpratnya. Bahishpratnya is what? The physical. Okay. The physical is also not I. Why is it not I? It is, it is arranged, it is an object, the physical body. There are many reasons, right? It is something which is just arranged. It is something which is what? An object of my awareness. And itself is really as an entity is nothing but forms within forms within forms within forms. Right? So that means that Bhagish Pratnya, which is Thula Sharira, this is the second class, right? When we define Sthula Sharira, what were one of the characteristics of that Sthula? It is Bahish Pratnya. Bahish Pratnya, as I said, is why is it Bahish Pratnya? Because it is able to interact with the external world through the sense organs and one's organs of action. Okay? So that is not what I am. Sthula Sharira, which is physical body, is not what I am. Anta Pratnya, the Sukshma Sharira, is not what I am. Right? Then, what is Na Ubhayat Pradyam? What is this Ubhayat Pradyam? In between, okay, at times, between the waking and deep sleep, or between dream and deep sleep, there is this twilight zone. Okay? There is I think just few days ago somebody told me, I think it was Neeru who told me that I was what, physically sleeping but mentally awake. Right? This, we all have or sometimes we have some experiences like lucid dream. Okay? So you are in the dream but you know that you are dreaming. Right? So these are all what we call Upayat Pranya. Nothing really, really defined. Right? Because the three normal states are what? Waking, dream and deep sleep. But at times we have this in-between states. Okay? And this also can be induced through drugs. What do we do? We hallucinate. We hallucinate and we create what? A completely different what? World. The different world. Which is neither exactly waking nor dream, dream nor deep sleep, we create a something other and then we think, ah, oh, that I'm in touch with reality. Not at all. If it was as simple as just popping some pills and having some extraordinary experience, that was wisdom, it would be so easy, everybody can just pop pills. Then we think, ah, oh, no, there is so much wisdom to it because this reality that we see is shaken and therefore it is amazing. What is so amazing about it? You are just actually impairing your 
capacity of the brain right and making it distorted using your own volition your it's an abuse that is an abuse it's a body it's a violence that is this amazing capacity that you have you are using your free will to distort it even further and you think that it is making you wiser so there are multiple distortions There are some Ubhayat Pradnya state which are almost natural, you don't do anything. But there are some Ubhayat Pradnya state which are self-induced through the abuse of your free will. And you delude yourself further by saying it's making me wiser. Oh my God. How many distortions within distortions within distortions. We keep on, we are born with some basic distortions and we keep on adding further and further distortions. Number seven. Okay? So, na anta pragnaha, na bahish pragnaha, na ubhuyata pragnaha, this in between states which are either natural or self induced. Surya wants to say something. In between waking and dream also is the states where we are in a very subjective mode. So that also can be ubhuyata pragnaha. So, where we perceive things which are not there, and it's not a dream, but you are your own bubble, you, know? you are creating your own world, and you interpret things, this is subjectivity, where you interpret things with your own lenses and your own color. So it's, it's not waking, yeah. and this, it's not dream also. I think, uh, I don't know what you mean, but I think I really understand, because one easy way to see this is, you know, generally when you are fully awake, you have a certain guard. You have a guard within yourself which tells you what is appropriate, what is not appropriate. So you are kind of a little bit, uh, you have a certain mastery. The minute you are tired and you are about to sleep, all those guards that are there are what? A little bit loose. So then what happens? You become cranky, you become, uh, you know, you become more irritable, right? Because these normal guards that we have are a little bit lucid, okay? So you enter into a slightly more subjective mode than usual. That also is one way of looking at it, right? It may not be the only way, but that can be a way of looking at it. Any state of subjectivity state of, where yeah. you are not in touch with really the waking external physical world, which is commonly shared by everybody. Okay. You're creating your own world. Exactly. There are no reality. You're living in a bubble. You're living in a bubble. Okay. So that is also not you. Then there is no pragnanakana. What is pragnanakana? Buddha. Positive. He's all ready. <laughs> Everything from the first class to now is all held in his in his mind. Okay, otherwise what? First class, I think I understood it's all gone. <laughs> okay. So Pragnanakanaha is the causal. Even the causal, what is uh, what is the to give us an insight into causal, what was the state which was talked about? The deep sleep. Okay? The deep sleep was where you don't have what the uh, understand have connection with the physical and the subtle body. Okay. So even when you have just this awareness with the causal, with potential, which gives rise to the next day, right? which gives you a different, what, through the connection with your physical and subtle body, it gives you a different day. Okay. So this is why you say tomorrow is yet another day, because you don't know how tomorrow is going to unfold. It is still in a potential. You think that the connection between present and tomorrow is not there? Very much there. What is carrying? It is the causal. The causal is, as Surya says, slowly, slowly, every day unfolding. 
what life and its situations do. Constantly at work. Okay? But that causal is also not I. Okay? Because we saw, why is it not I? It, it depends upon, first of all, exactly, itself is something that, you know, I'm, I am the one who experiences right, different situations in my life. I'm not the situations. Okay? The causal will give you what? Different situations. Your punya and papa will give you what? Different situations in life. Right? To which you have to respond. So are you the experiences or you are the experiences, experiencer who, what, experiences different situations. So that means you are also not the causal which gives rise to different situations in your life. Okay? So that means you are not prajnana khanaha. Okay? Then na pragnam na apragnam. Then you think that, okay, I am this individual consciousness, right? Which we, what we think, what uh, generally, uh, as when I asked that you are this awareness, is it individual or it is total? So even after you have said, right, that I am not the physical, I am not the subtle, and I am not the causal, you may still keep your individuality and give what awareness as you you understand that awareness as only connected to you even that you are not right but because what is the vision of this awareness it is one all pervading it's nothing specific to you wonderful sure Okay. So, after doing this negation, if you still retain the individuality, then that's not what Upanishad is talking about. Your awareness as being different from somebody else's awareness. That's not what Upanishad is talking about. As Shona very rightly said, it's one, one whole. Like one space seems to be confined to what? Glass space, cup space, bottle space, stomach space. That is only one. Okay. So this is neither pragna or you can say it is apragna. What is apragna? You may also conclude that if all that I think I am is either connected to what? Physical body? Because when I say I'm short or I'm fair, I'm talking about what? I with reference to physical body. Now that is negated. Okay. Or when I say I'm happy or I'm jealous or I'm sad or whatever, I'm talking with reference to what? The subtle body that I'm not. Then when I talk about you know, my next birth, I don't know what it is going to be. I'm talking about what? The causal. Okay? Now, when I'm not all three, what remains is what? Nothingness. Which is what we call apranya. Okay? And it says, hey, don't make that mistake. Right? You may think that after you have negated, Physical, subtle and causal, there is nothingness. Hey, it's not nothingness. It is what? Limitlessness. There is a huge difference between nothingness and limitlessness. This is why we say it is sat, it is there. As Shona very beautifully today she said, at the end of the first class, she says, there is constant what? When I look at thoughts, there is a constant manifest and unmanifest, right? And that's changing all the time. But there is one invariable. And that invariable, don't think that it doesn't exist. It is there. Okay? 
okay? And that unmanifest and unmanifest, you can use that manifest and unmanifest to what? Talk about just the thought or you can talk about the whole world because it's constantly what? Manifest, unmanifest, the minute now, manifest, unmanifest. Okay. Or even Ishvara, what? In the potential and the entire manifest universe. So that manifest, unmanifest is constantly at play. What is invariable is this. Sub chit, which is limitless. Within that sub and chit limitless, which is unchanging, the play of manifest and unmanifest is going on at so many different levels. It is just, the observer. Yeah. You're not even the observer no, because the observer, the so-called status of observer is the function of subtle and physical body coming together. So through this, what actually Upanishad shows you is that which is the truth of everything. You see what I mean? We mistake it, you know? We mistake it, exactly. Exactly. Okay, so this is what it says, na apranyam. Don't make the mistake that after you have negated all three, there is nothingness. We are not talking about nothingness here. There is limitlessness, which is you, not some other limitlessness. So it is na, pra, na pragnam, na apragnam, adrushtyam. Okay? So now this awareness, is it available to you as one of the objects in the universe? No. Can you objectify this awareness? No. It is, you can't objectify it. Okay? It is available to you as what? I am, which is not subject to objectification. So how does Upanishad work? Something which you already know that there is, I am, okay? This I am, due to ignorance, due to weight, is loaded with what? So many things that it is not. What is Upanishad doing? Freeing that I am from all these different loading that you have done so that you can see it as it is peels. You remove peels within peels within peels because the layer or the veil is not just one, there are multiple levels. Slowly, slowly removing it so that you can see yourself in a true light. Okay? But so therefore, something which is I am without objectifying it, there is only one thing in this universe that you can understand without objectifying it is what? Your nature. Your true nature. Your nature. Because the I can never be objectified. But without objectification, it still can be understood because it is available to you as self-evident. You need to know I am to what? Impute the attributes of physical body onto it. If you don't know I am, how will you say I am short? The I am is the first thing that you know. Then you make a mistake of what? Taking the attributes of physical body and imputing it on I. You first need to know I am. So that I am is known by everyone. Okay. The imputation happens by everyone. So everybody makes a mistake. So that mistake then becomes a law. Until you use Upanishads to remove those false imputations. Okay. So this is but the process through which you do it is not through objectification. If you wait for the I to be objectified and this is something which is very very common. People say 
that, you know, I understand that I'm limitless, but I want to experience it. When I say I want to experience it, experience is what? Is an object. Right? Like every experience comes and goes, is like something that I objectify, and then it goes away and gives rise to another experience, which is what also I objectify. So now this whole, you know, we gloss over and we say, yeah, it's not available for objectification. And still you say, I want to feel it. I want to experience it. That means you're, you're not learning what is being said. Okay? It is something, is something that you have to understand as Pratibodha Viditam Matam. The Upanishads say, the only way to understand I is the truth of all experiences, not any given experience. Because one experience goes, the next experience comes. That goes, another comes. And this is what Surya is trying to show in morning meditation. One thought which gives you a certain experience comes and that goes. So when you are experiencing that, you see it without any kind, you see it as it is. So in fact, what you need to then understand is that when there is a thought which gives you a certain experience, is awareness present or not? What is a thought? Manifestation of... Um, okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, the awareness, the awareness is there, and then when you got the thought, it gives birth to a thought. Excellent. Right? So that means there is a thought, let's say when I'm thinking of a tree, there is a tree thought. Okay? Next minute I have a cow thought. Okay? So my tree thought is replaced with cow thought. Okay? So that means that the, the form is different. In, in one, the form is tree and then in the next, the form is cow. Okay? But if I think in terms of the content of that thought, what is the content of the thought because of which I'm able to think of a tree on one, one second ago and then later of a cow. The content of every thought is what? Awareness. Like, thought is like the table and awareness is like what? The good. The good. It doesn't get affected. It doesn't get affected. The thought comes, right? A form comes. Okay? The content never gets affected. Okay? One form is transformed into another form, another thought. Awareness never gets affected. Very true, Russia. And that's what makes it already free. Okay? Because the satyam is never affected by mitya. Pratibodha Vidhita This is all the beautiful Upanishads, different Upanishads. Vidhita Matam. Vidhita Matam. How will you understand this awareness? Will you understand? Because you think that when you understand awareness, then there will be some huge expansion. Right. And light and some bliss. And this is how you project. And you keep on waiting for that experience. But that experience will what? It will be what? It will start at a given point in time. That means it started now. It was not there for how many years? Surya? 6.5 billion years it was not there. Okay? And that experience will end. Even if I prolong it, prolong it, prolong it, how long it will last? Maybe 15 minutes. And it will not be there for how many? 
another billions and billions and billions of years. Can I call it limitless? How ridiculous. It's a laughable idea.
just a simpler example. A simpler example is, I create my own expectation that when I understand quantum physics and when I understand that all that is here is just nothing but mostly space and just few particles, you loose particles roaming around, I'll be able to walk through this wall. That is laughable. Right? That very expectation will not. I'm taken for a ride for the rest of my life. I could imagine you going. <laughs> exactly. But what? Can I can I deny the fact that all that is here is just space and a few atoms and particles just roaming around? I can't deny it because that's reality. Okay. But still the reality is arranged in a way that well, I cannot pass through the wall. So this is something that I must understand accurately that when I understand awareness is free, it has got nothing to do with you know having some sense of expansion for a few minutes, it's ridiculous to connect that awareness, which is all pervasive, to that little state of your mind. It is ridiculous. But you're so serious about it. And you're trying so hard to manipulate your mind to be in a certain way. Is awareness that to be in our language called God? See, that's what I'm saying. There is one aspect of God, which is what we call all knowledge, right? Which is arranging your neurons in a way. And then there is another aspect of that God, which is the truth of that all knowledge, which is awareness. That this is Mithya. Exactly. So that means in Ishwara, the entity, okay, there is one aspect which is Mithya, which is what? Physical, subtle and causal. And then the truth of Ishwara is what? Satya, Jnana, Ananta. Even in Ishwara is physical and subtle. That's what I did, no? Yes. You understood. That's how much we did. Just as an individual, all three are Mithya. Your physical body, your subtle body and your causal is Mithya and there is awareness. In Ishvara, which is all physical body, all subtle body, all causal, is also Mithya and there is the same awareness. So when the way says, I am water and what? The ocean says, what? I am water. That water, is it different? Water is the same. The forms are different. Obviously they are different. One form, which is wave, is different from the all-encompassing ocean. That's why we made the distinction, Vishwa and Virat. Please understand the meaning of what we are studying. Okay. There is this entire physical universe which I have not created. I as an individual has not created. That is Ishvara. Ishvara was not only created entire physical universe, but within which what? My physical body. Ishvara is that which has created the entire subtle universe, within which my subtle body is there. The Ishvara is what? The all knowledge, right, which organizes everything which are in form of laws which makes those physical and subtle bodies what they are. Within which are my particular causes. Understand all of that. But the truth of that Ishvara, the all knowledge is what? Awareness. Awareness. Okay? Because the relationship between awareness and all knowledge as we have seen is all knowledge cannot exist without consciousness or awareness. Whereas awareness does not need all knowledge for its existence. 
Okay. So when Ishvara says, I am, right, there is one aspect of Ishvara which is Mithya, which is physical, subtle and causal. And then there is a truth of Ishvara which is Satyam Jnanam Ananta. Satyam Jnanam Ananta. Ananta means it does not have any limit. It does not have any limit. Okay. Because everything, the subtle, causal, and physical exists in it, but itself is free from all. That's why you call it limitless. <coughs> so this is where we say it is adrushyam. Oh my God. Avyabhadyam. Avyabhadyam is what? Not within the transaction. All the transactions that are taking place are at what level? Huh? Physical and subtle. Exactly. Right? So that means everything that is happening, you are looking at forms, it is creating certain <coughs> responses in you, then you respond according to your actions, then you get the result. All that is within what we call Vyavahara, the transactions. Savita very rightly identified. Vyavahara happens within physical, subtle, and then what? Through causal, again, different manifestation of physical and subtle. This particular awareness, is it getting engaged in that Vyavahara? No. no. It is Avyavahara. Because of which all the transactions happen, itself is free from all the transactions. Okay. Why? Because all the transactions of <coughs> physical and subtle and causal, they are mithya, they are dependent, right? They have a dependent reality. The dependent reality means they cannot exist without awareness, but awareness while appearing as all three, is free from it. So it is not subject to whatever is happening at physical and subtle level. It is there, but it is unaffected. Exactly. Yes. It is there, but it is unaffected. Always unaffected. By whatever transaction. Perfect. Okay? Like water is there, when there is tsunami and water is equally there when there is a calm, beautiful ocean. This tsunami, does it affect water? Or in calmness, does it affect water? Water never changes. It always is what it is. The waves change, the height of the waves change. And sometimes they change to an extent that what? The entire cities are submerged. But the water, while being in the way, is never undergoing any change. This is the trick of Vedanta. Because that is the reality. So you need not know all the different waves and all the different shapes and size of the past, present, future. And you don't need to expand the vainness into some limitlessness. That is all ridiculous. The water pervades every different name and form and body and always remains unaffected. That is the reality. You're not manipulating. You're just seeing things as they are. Okay, so this is what we say, avyabhāryam, avgrāhyam. Can you grab this awareness now? I want awareness to be close to me now. It is eluding me. Now I want to go towards awareness. Where will you go? Where will you go and grab it? It's everywhere. It's everywhere. <laughs> this is why in the morning, Surya was saying, you think that you want to connect to Ishvara, you do the other way and say, tell me where can I go where there is no Ishvara. <laughs> Try to run away from Ishvara 
and see if you can find a place where there is no Ishwara. Time is Ishwara, space is Ishwara, the entire physical world is Ishwara, the entire subtle world is Ishwara, entire causal world is Ishwara, the truth of Ishwara is all now uh, this awareness and that's all there is. Try to be away from it. Where is the question of your connecting to it? You can never be away from it. That is knowledge. First, you have to bring it in your awareness, the, that reality which already is and that requires effort. Later on you can say, hey, wherever I go, whatever I do, that is never away from me. Where is the question of going to some place and grabbing it? Oh, I want to go to Himalayas because I will have better energies and I will have better... Hey, it's equally, this awareness is everywhere. You can never, even if you want to be away from it, you never can get away from it. So that means it is Avgahyam. It is not something that you acquire like an object, which was not there. You know, the money that you can acquire, which was not there. The power you can acquire, which was not there. Vacation or going to a place that you can reach, which was not there. But the awareness is something that is always present. You can never be away from it. The time depends upon awareness. The space depends upon awareness. Every object within time and space depends upon awareness. Where will you go where there is no awareness? The, in the unmanifest, there is all knowledge. Even that is what? Nothing but awareness. You, nothing can exist without awareness. Awareness is independent of everything else. Okay? So it is a grand. Don't try to acquire it like you acquire everything else. Because acquiring means that you think it's not there right now. The teacher can show you what already is. That is the teacher. Because the vision of the teacher is you're already free, you're already limitless. And now the teacher, in five days, I'm trying to show you how it is so. To acquire, to acquire it means uh, even you can lose it. So yeah, higher. exactly. Right yes. now you don't have it, yes. right? Yes. Then you get it and then also what? You can lose it. Yes. Exactly like everything else. Yes. If, you think, if you are thinking you can acquire it, then there will always be the fear you can lose it. This often. And this is why the no, the experience you can acquire for a while, right? You feel good, you feel sense of expansion, you feel, yes. and then you lose it. Then what? Again, the whole chase for what? Recreating that experience. You are caught in samsara because you miss that awareness can never be displaced by any experience. And it never is affected by any experience. Whether it is an experience of expansion or contraction or anything. It is always present everywhere. And pervading everything, it is unaffected. As Uddhav said. Pervading everything, it never is affected. That is the reason. Okay. Then, agrahyam, avyavharyam, alakshanam. Can you give an attribute to this awareness? If you give it an attribute, what will it become? One of the objects of the world. If you impute any attribute to awareness, then it will become what? An object. Okay? So when I say that this table is different from that chair, why do I know that it is different from chair? It has attributes, right? This is wooden, that is plastic, 
this is this shape, that is that shape. So if you give any attributes to awareness, what will it become within time and space? There are many objects and awareness would be what? One, exactly, one object among many who has a different attribute. What are we talking about here? Exactly. This is what it says. It is attributeless. It is being, because it is attributeless, it can as though, what, appear as many different attributes. You see? Yes. 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 Is it saying that it is attributeless? Is it so? No, because the attributes belong to what? There are physical objects which have attributes. You see, in that sense. And there are subtle objects which also have attributes. Right? But those attributes belong where? To physical and subtle and not to the awareness. Left the side to the eye. Exactly. And your sight is different from mine. And then it's different from his. Those attributes are there, but they are where? At the physical and subtle level. Even at causal level. Because your set of karma is different from my set of karma. There are attributes. This is why you say somebody is an evolved person. And the other one is, you know, not. They've come with good samskaras. What does it mean? Yeah, exactly. The causes are different. And then awareness is attributeless because it gives rise to... To all of that without being any yeah. of that. Exactly, Shona. Exactly. Right? So it is attributeless. Sorry, one o'clock. Mm -hmm. I will do it tomorrow. Okay? But you are seeing now what it says, because the love says, before I read, I read this and I, I didn't know how to make sense of it. <laughs> right? Now his eyes are all shiny. <laughs> Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnan Purnamudachade Purnasya Purnamadaya Shirde Om Shanti 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 Om Shri Guru